It has been getting chilly here in Amsterdam, so I've been digging out all my blankets. And Stitchy, you've been getting cozy in the blankets too. It's just trying to make a little nest. They adopt every blanket that I make. So I've been digging out all my blankets and uh, getting cozy with them on the couch and the dogs. And we put together a lot of new blanket kits at Stephen and Penelope using our new Westwool colors from Westwool Tandem. So you'll find a lot of cozy DK weight blankets and there's a lot to choose from. And some of the blankets even use the same types of yarn. So in this video, I'm gonna show you these Westwool blankets, show you which ones are easier to knit than, uh, than others, which types of kits you're looking at and what the color effects are gonna be when you work with these kits for the blankets. And we'll also take a look at how to customize some of the color palettes and maybe take a kit and spice it up with some of your leftover stash yarn. I don't know if y'all are like me, but oh, if you have some, this is so heavy, this, just some leftovers. Oh my gosh. Okay, I think I can make a couple blankets with that. But Stitchy, what do you think? Should we dive into some painting blankets? So the easiest blankets you're gonna find in the Westwool selection that we just uh, revamped with some new Westwool kits are the painting honeycombs painting bricks, and painting waves blankets. Let's start with the painting honeycombs. This was one of my first big blanket projects with Westwool, and it features a main color. So when you select a kit that has a main color with all the contrast color pops, you're going to get an overall dominance of that main color. So when you're looking at colors, whether you're choosing your own palette or selecting one of our kits, the main color is the skeins that you see the most of, and each of these painting honeycombs blankets includes six skeins of the main color, which is plenty to make a really big size. So that's what you're gonna see the most of. So if you're wondering what palette to choose, I'd start with the main color because that's what you're gonna see the most. And what do you wanna, what do you wanna see in your blanket? Do you want a really dark main color? So something like a really dark black with really bright color pops would make a beautiful rainbow explosion of slip stitches and then it's gonna give you that stained glass effect in your blanket. Something really dark as the framing main color. You could also go with a, like a dark gray, any dark neutral or a dark brown, and that's gonna give you that strong grounding effect to your blanket palette. And then your color pops can be anything. You could go with a rainbow selection of color pops, or maybe have a dark main color and then choose all tones of one color family maybe like blues. You could have lots of different blues and then see what you want your main color to be. If you don't want it so dark and heavy, then you could pick a light main color, like a light blue or a light gray, and then all your color pops could be uh, bright and saturated in one color family. So I think that would be really soft and lovely with this light gray colorway, something like this. This is the Dutch sky color. It's one of my favorite kind of stone cold solid grays. This is really nice to form a light main color and then some saturated or bright color pops to bounce off of that light canvas. Think of your main color like a canvas, okay? That's what you're gonna see the most of and then you get to paint with colors. So this painting honeycombs blanket is one of the easiest to knit because it's just knits, pearls, it's a rectangle. So you always have the same stitch count if you can knit and purl, you can do this blanket. The color work effect is worked with slip stitches, which is basically not doing anything. So if you can knit or purl, that means you can not knit, which is what a slip stitch is. So it's really easy. You just work with one color at a time and just keep on going with that big rectangle and you can stop at any time. So if you find that when you work with yarns from your stash or if you get a kit, if you're like, I have knit so much and this is a big size, but I still have yarn, but I'm ready for my blanket to be done, you just bind off early. It's that easy. So you're gonna get plenty of yarn to do a really big, large size, but if you don't want it so massive, just do an I-cord bind off after any stripe and do that with the main color and it's gonna look really good. So that's the Painting Honeycombs blanket. And then the same types of kits that we have, it's six skeins of the main color, and then there's eight contrast color pops. So eight different colors for your contrast colors. And you can use that same type of kit and you'll find these same palettes in our Painting Waves blanket, which is a really nice rectangle with a wavy motif. And the Painting Bricks blanket, which is another really simple rectangle with that fun staggered brick 
motif in the blanket. So with those blankets, the painting waves and the painting bricks, you'll find these same kit color palettes. And I'm gonna link to all of these down below. You'll find all these colors at Steven and Penelope. So we pre-selected a lot of really good uh, color palettes, a whole rainbow selection of different options. So you could go really warm with terracotta tones. There's something for the pink lovers, really nice, sweet and sassy pinks, and then always purples. We gotta have some purples in some of the palettes too. So you'll find all those options linked down below. And if you wanna work from your stash as well, the most important thing is getting a main color or a main color family. So in my painting bricks blanket, I used a one color family for my main color. There were lots of brown and warm tones, but I used some different shades. So if you don't have six skeins of one color, you can mix it up and just get things that are similar from your collection. But another good way to use what you've got and mix it with something new is you could get six skeins of the main color. So get a dark main color or get a neutral main color and use that Westwell Tandem as your main color. So pick what you want to ground your palette and then your contrast colors could be leftovers. So get your main color, six skeins, and then if you've got some leftover pinks and oranges, you could start to build a color family and mix those leftover amounts. Some of them could be really small for just one stripe, or if you have like half of a skein or half of a ball, that's good for several stripes. So just get a bunch of leftover colors handy. And my trick when I'm make making these stash busty palettes with leftovers is to always have a pile of more colors or, or more yarn than I think I'm actually gonna need so that you don't get to the end of your blanket and you start running out of yarn. And yeah, just get more than you think you'll need because you don't have to use it all, but like just get all your warm colors out and put them in a basket. And even if you think they don't go together, just say yes and don't stress, okay? Say yes to your options. And then as you start to knit them, the colors will start to speak to you. And then you'll go, oh, I thought these were kind of crazy, but they actually look much calmer in the blanket. So then maybe I'll add, oh, maybe even a warm yellow spice. And then you start to get a more dynamic palette. So play around with your leftovers, but have more than you think you'll need just in case. And then as you're knitting, you can make adjustments to customize the color palette. So those are the painting patterns. Let's dive into some spicier circular style blankets. And one of them is right behind me here. One of my favorites is Slip Stravaganza Blanket, designed after the Slip Stravaganza shawl. And it is a big beauty. There is a small size in the pattern and this large size is just the epic. <gasps> what you gotta go for. It is just a total statement piece that you'll have forever and ever. It's really big and the yarns we have are all pre-selected for you as kits. So for the Slip Stravaganza Blanket, you'll find that the main color, this dark color has five skeins of Westwell Tandem and the three contrast colors have four skeins each of Westwell Tandem. So it's a lot of yarn and it's a lot of blanket. So it's one of those projects you cast on and you're knitting it during the winter and as you're knitting it, it gets big enough to actually be a blanket on your lap while you're still working on those rows at the end. I love that feeling of when the project gets big enough to actually be useful and you can have this big blanket on your lap, but you're still working on those rows and enjoying the relaxation. So a Slip Stravaganza blanket is four colors. The most important part for picking your skeins, if you're picking your own palette, is get five skeins of the main color. You're gonna see that in the center, framing those honeycombs, framing the textures, and again, this framing color and this stripe in between all those contrast colors. So you really see the main color throughout as a frame for all the color pops. And then the other three contrast colors, four skeins each, they all kind of do the same thing. They're the little accents. They dance around, make the bubbles. You'll find slip stitches, short rows, and it ends with a beautiful big chevron border with slip stitches. It's action packed and really exciting to knit. So all those kits, you'll find four color palettes. Some of them are in one color family. That's the original Norway color palette for the blanket. So that's the original teal toned kit. And there's also some more contrasting palettes. So if you don't want it so one color saying the same thing, 
you could get like a gold and a purple and a blue and a, yeah, mix up the colors and it could be more of a clashy contrast vibe. Another four palette, another four skein. Whoa, brioche, are you gonna use my star blanket? I have one of these star blankets at home in a multicolor palette and that's my most used blanket because it got adopted by Brioche and Stitch. Brioche, do you like my big blankets? Oh, yes, yes, you like cuddling in them with your sister, don't you? So the star blanket was designed after the Starflake shawl, which began with this modular parallelogram motif that formed a star in the shawl. So I took that idea all the way in the round to make those parallelograms form a circular star for the blanket, and that's the center focal point of this beautiful project. So the pattern's written for four colors, and those are the kits you're gonna find at Stephen and Penelope. This is the original glowing star kit with our heathered grays and the gold glow color pop. You only see that glow color, that's color D. Color D is like the color pop of the shawl for the stripes, the little stripes at the end and the short rows. And then I chose three grays for the other colors. So when you're getting your kit in the mail or if you're picking your palette, the skein requirements for Star Flanket are three skeins of color A, which is the light color, and four skeins of color B, which is the darkest color, four skeins of the medium color, color C, that medium gray, and three skeins of color D. So you need four skeins of two of the colors and three skeins of the other two colors. So four, four, three, three, those are the skein requirements. But when you get a kit, it has the skeins pre-selected for you. Uh, but just make sure when you're selecting them as A, B, C, D, that colors B and C use the most yarn. Color B is the darkest. Color C is that medium gray right here. You see all the colors kind of equally throughout the blanket, but colors B and C you use the most of, and colors A and D, the lightest, and that gold color pop, just use three skeins each. So A and D use a little bit less yardage, but this is the four, whoa, four color palette of Star Flanket, and it's also a really big circular size. And one of my favorite features of this is actually that simple little striped I-cord bind off at the end. It just really frames it in a fun, fresh way. I mean, you could go out wearing this as a shawl, schlanket it up. Brioche, what do you think? Is this too much shawl? Never enough, never enough. So that's the star blanket. And then the multicolor option, if you're gonna go stash diving, you could get just single skeins of West Wool, the tandem DK weight. I'm always going to these warm colors. What if I mix it up and go, oh, ooh, okay, let's get funky and go like gold and blue. Well, that's kind of a funky off primary. Ooh, maybe some gray. So if you're mixing up from your stash, you could get, Oh, this for saying something. I need my unicorn. Oh my gosh, we're making magic. These are the palettes I like to build. These like clashy, funky ones. Oh, my royal blue went away. Let's get maybe a light. Yeah, some contrast. So I think this is starting to say something. It's starting to get very jazzy. So when you're mixing colors from your stash or getting single skeins, you could just go crazy and make up the colors for every single section. That's what I did in my multicolored star blanket was I just grabbed a new color style for each section, used single skeins, some West wool, some collectibles from other yarns. You could even hold two strands of fingering weight together to get that DK weight thickness. So get creative with your stash, but if you want it all picked out for you, that's why we have all these fun kits. You could do the neutrals with a pop or go in a more contrasty, all the colors, different contrast colors in the same kit. Let's see, what other? four color palettes could we make? Or you could go with just think about them all being like really, really bright. Oh, that could be fun. Oh, I think I want this. And then, ooh, a little candy. And then maybe like a mocha as the main color. Ooh, maybe a dark blue. Ooh, I'm liking that. But then maybe something different. Oh, let's do this green. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, I'm liking that. That could be cool. Ooh or this dark chestnut as a main color. Oh, so many fun things. It's, I like when this dark like reflects off of that glow of the Beatrix colorway. This is pickle juice, Beatrix, unicorn, and chestnut. 
So, so many options to choose. We have single skeins of Tandem if you want to build your own palette, but otherwise all these blanket kit kits are linked down below. If you're just getting started, then I definitely recommend going with the Painting Honeycombs blanket. And the Painting Waves and the Painting Bricks blankets are both also really easy. So I'll link to all the projects down below as well if you just want to download the patterns. And then the next level up is trying the Star Blanket or the Slip Stravaganza blanket. This one has a little brioche in it for the Star Blanket, so you'll get to enjoy that gorgeous ribbing. And if you don't want to do brioche, then do the Slip Stravaganza blanket. This is just Knits Pearls, Slip Stitches, and you'll learn that really fun bubble stitch. So I'm getting inspired by all these colors. I've got another blanket I'm working on at home in West Wool, so I hope to have that ready for you next, probably by spring, I think I'll get that blanket out. So cast on a blanket. If you don't cast it on now, then it's not gonna get started and then it won't get finished. So they're big projects, but my trick for finishing these big blankets is just to work on them a little bit at a time. It's not about knitting so much all day, every day. It's just chipping away at it getting a few rows done in between your other projects and allow that blanket project to be something comforting. It doesn't have to be something huge and overwhelming in your life. So if it takes a little bit longer, just enjoy the sections and let it be part of your knitting rhythm. Work on some little accessories, do a section or a few rows. And that's why a lot of these blankets have different sections and stripes in them. So you can kind of get that sense of accomplishment stripe by stripe as you're knitting and then before you know it, you'll be reaching those big, beautiful rows at the end and those big striping sequences at the ends of the blanket. And it just gets to that full maximized comfort effect. So I hope you get inspired by these blankets as much as I did making them for you. And there'll be some more coming around the corner. But uh, you can check out those links below. And I'd love to hear if you have some other Westnet's blanket project that you're working on, or if you have any other blanket ideas from Westnet's sweaters or Westnet shawls that you'd like to see become a blanket, I'm always looking for more ideas on how to expand the Westnet's world into the blanket territory. So let me know down below which projects you think should be blanketified. Yeah, is that a word? We're gonna make it one. So thanks for watching and I hope you stay warm and cozy this season and I'll see you in the next video.